Hi folks, it's Marvin Music with uh, MedicareSchool.com and we want to welcome you to this edition of uh, Medicare Monday where every Monday at um, 5 o'clock uh, Central Time uh, we tackle uh, Medicare subjects and topics that I think are critical for you to know. Uh, I've said this many times uh, and so for the sake of being redundant, I'm sorry for those of you who have heard this, but uh, many of you are new to our group. Uh, but I want you to know really the philosophy of our company as well as why I do Medicare Mondays. And the question is this, uh, do you have to know everything about Medicare in order to make great Medicare decisions? And the answer to that question is no, you don't. Uh, you don't have to be a Medicare expert. Uh, to make good Medicare decisions. Sometimes uh, people uh, experience paralysis by analysis, and sometimes you can overanalyze things to the point where uh, you uh, are ready to pull your hair out. And so you don't need to do that. Uh, but the next question is, do you have to know some things about Medicare to make good Medicare decisions? And that's absolutely right. Uh, sad to say, there are some people that just copy what their brother-in-law did or copy what their you know, neighbor did or their friend did. Don't do that. Uh, you're, you're a different person. You have different medications you take, certainly different health history, different health concerns, uh, certainly different uh, risk tolerances. So you're different. So I would suggest don't just simply copy what someone else has done. That's not good, nor uh, do you have to try to become a Medicare expert. Uh, I've been in this business 15 years now, and I'm still learning. Uh, I know a lot about Medicare, and I really love doing uh, what we do uh, in the Medicare business. Uh, but you don't have to know everything to make good decisions. And so that's what I try to do at Medicare on Monday, to share with you things that are not fluff, things that are truly meat and potatoes when it comes to Medicare, just basic stuff, uh, things that you need to really understand before you start making uh, Medicare decisions. Uh, I know there's a lot of pressure out there for uh, when you talk to some agents, they just want you to make a decision to make it now. And by the way, here's my philosophy. When people do that, I know they don't care about me. They care about themselves. If they're, they're, they're trying to pressure me to make a decision now, whose best interest are, are they really interested in? Usually it's theirs. And so I avoid people like that. I don't want to do business with people that put pressure on me uh, because that's just not, I don't want to be treated that way. And if you decide to work with us, uh, you're not going to experience that. We don't put pressure. Hey, if you want to do business, uh, we're happy to help you. If you don't, uh, we're fine as well, okay? Uh, you know, your, your business is not going to make or break me. Uh, it's not going to give me my next meal, I promise you. Uh, we care about you and would love to help you. But we're not going to put pressure on you to make some kind of decision. So point is this. I want to make sure that you understand why we do these. And so this is important information. Now, uh, normally I, I, I dig right into my topic. You know what we're going to talk about, some of the things insurance companies don't want you to hear. But I, I need to deal with a couple of, uh, what we'll say, kind of house cleaning business items uh, because it's very important. Uh, you are uh, being inundated right now, uh, emails and, uh, uh, you know, uh, in your mailbox and TV, all kinds of ads on the radio. And this is just that time of the year where it uh, really is just uh, an inundation of material called uh, the Medicare Open Enrollment. Now, here's what's important to note. This open enrollment season, folks, is really designed for only two types of plans, and that would be advantage plans and prescription drug plans. And the reason for that is because uh, those plans are only written for one contract year. That's it, one calendar year. And so when you're on a advantage plan or a drug plan, it's an agreement between Medicare, the insurance company, and you. And uh, Medicare says to the insurance company, they have to be true to that one-year agreement because you made a decision based upon uh, the terms of that insurance. But after that, uh, the next year, they don't have to offer that plan, and sometimes they don't. And they can change anything they want on the plan. They can improve the plan. They can uh, add benefits to it. They can take benefits away. So they can change any of the terms of coverage and conditions and financial terms that they want to on those plans, drug plans and advantage plans. So that's what this is all about. And so if you're just coming into Medicare new and you're going to start Medicare, let's say next year, January, February, March, uh, don't get wrapped up in all the pressure and the hype as though I got to make a decision uh, during this open enrollment season. No, you don't. Uh, you're new to Medicare. Uh, you come in using what's called the initial enrollment period. For instance, let's say your birthday is January. Yeah, you can begin to shop now and make some decisions, uh, but, but you're not bound to that December 7th guideline. You may uh, not want to start your Medicare until maybe February, March, or April. You may don't Want to, may not want to start right at your 65th birthday because you or your spouse are still working. So don't get uh, wrapped up in the hype and the pressure. Only those people that presently have advantage plans and prescription drug plans are, are required uh, to make decisions during this time. Now, some of you 
uh, you're on those plans and you like those plans. So as long as you opened your annual notice of change, which was mailed to you by that Advantage company or by that drug plan, they mailed you um, a packet, it's a thick one. And they were disclosing all the things that they are going to do with that plan for 2023. Open the packet up, pay attention. What are they changing? Uh, normally they don't change a lot of things, but you're watching to see, uh, did the premium change? Uh, if it's a drug plan, uh, especially. Um, uh, did uh, the formulary change? Are your medications still covered? Did they re-tier a medication? Uh, this, this happened. We had one of the companies uh, this year, and we liked the plan and the company, but they made a major change that we're very annoyed by. And here's what they did. Uh, in 2022, this year, if you're on a tier three brand name medication, you had a flat copay, maybe $45, $47 a month. Well, that same plan next year, what they did on tier three medications is now you're going to pay coinsurance. So it's no longer a flat copay. You're going to pay 25% uh, 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 coinsurance for that medication. Here's a great example. If you're on an expensive medication, let's say like Eliquis, retails for five or $600 a month. It's for AFib. And usually on a good plan, that's going to be a tier three medication, a 45 to maybe $47 copay. Very reasonable. Now, again, Eloquist will eventually probably put you in the donor hole and you're going to see that go up. So that plan in this year, it, you, you paid $45, $47 copay uh, for Eloquist until you reach the donor hole. Now in 2023, that same plan, you will pay 25% coinsurance in January when you go to pick up that prescription. So instead of paying $45 copay, now you're going to pay about $125 maybe $150 for that same medication. So we saw a $100 increase on some medications on that very same plan. And that's why I'm saying open your plan up uh, for 2023 and see what they're doing. Did they re-tier a medication? Did they drop a medication you're covered on uh, now? Maybe a brand and now they're no longer going to cover it. They're going to cover a couple generics instead of the brand name and they can do that. So pay attention to the annual notice of change to see if there's anything that they're changing in that plan, that is going to be, uh, it's going to hurt you. That's, uh, it's it's uh, going to uh, hurt you adversely. In other words, you're not going to like that plan anymore. Now you need to feel pressure during this seven week period to look and shop and compare and make some kind of a decision to switch. Okay. But don't panic. We just started. We've been at this now, what, eight days. Uh, just started on, on the 15th of October. And so you have some time, but do your due diligence, but, but do me also this favor. Don't assume that just because you liked your plan, uh, your Advantage or drug plan in 2022, that you're going to like it in 2023. Do not assume that. Don't get lazy. Open uh, the packet, see what they're doing. And if you like the plan still, it's still meeting your needs and it paid well and serviced you well in 2022, and they haven't made a major change, then you don't have to do a thing because that drug plan, that Advantage plan will automatically renew into 2023. Okay, so my whole point is this. Uh, right now, uh, you're going to be inundated with all kinds of information. So don't get wrapped up in the pressure of it. Uh, just kind of take a breath and look at your options, analyze your plan, and make a decision. And the truth is, with people on Advantage or drug plans, probably 80% of you will still be satisfied with your plan. Just make sure that you are. If you are, uh, let it automatically renew. So you're going to be um, uh, getting a lot of information. Now, there's, I, I've warned people about this before, uh, but there's, there's three things that you've got to be careful of in this business. Uh, number one, you got to be careful of agents. <laughs> and by the way, I am one, and I have many who work for me. Uh, and we are a Medicare brokerage firm, but you've got to be careful of agents. And I'm going to tell you why, because it is very difficult to succeed in this business. And so if you a lot of people come and go, uh, and they're coming to the business and they may last six months or they may last a couple of years, they're gone because truly it takes about five to seven years to really succeed in this business. And so, uh, you got to watch agents because a lot of them are rookies. They may mean well, they may have a good heart and they want to do what's right, but sometimes they simply do not know what they're talking about. They do not know how to connect the pieces of the Medicare puzzle together. Now, they may know a little bit more uh, than the average person, but they, they really know enough to give good advice. And sometimes they don't. Usually, they know just enough to be dangerous. So watch that. Hey, if, if, you, if you work with an agent and they haven't written, you know, four or 5,000 plans, I'm just telling you, they, they really are not going to know this business. It takes a while to really learn it. So the bottom line is watch for agents, especially rookies. Also, watch for agents that are just simply want, uh, trying to uh, put a pressure on you to make a quick decision as though you got to make the decision today. And the only thing they want to talk about is advantage plans. Beware of that 
Now, by the way, Advantage Plans is a good option for many, many people, but it's not for everyone. And if you know the ins and outs of how Medicare Advantage Plans work, I want to talk a little bit about that today, uh, then you may find out that's not your best option. You may want to go with the supplemental plan. Remember, you only have, <clears throat> excuse me, two options anyways. Either we stay in A and B, get a supplemental plan, or we replace A and B with an Advantage plan. Those are your only two options. And so, again, a lot of agents just want to push Advantage plans. <clears throat> Why? Because uh, they're, they're easier to sell because uh, it's a zero premium usually. So they're focused on that. Uh, and, uh, but what they're not doing is uh, they're not taking the time to really see if that is in your best interest because there are a lot of rules and regulations and things that apply to Advantage plans that you need to be aware of. And agents don't want to take the time uh, to uh, spend with you to talk about that. Okay, you ought to have at least a good hour, hour and a half to really understand all your options. So they want to put some advantage plans because it's, uh, it's cheap. Uh, they throw in some perks that original Medicare doesn't offer. And so they push that uh, because it's more of an easier sell. But uh, uh, they also make more money. Uh, and I can assure you, if you buy an advantage plan, that agent makes about twice as much initial commission uh, than they do on a supplemental plan. So a lot of agents, uh, they're just chasing the dollar, trying to make as much money as they can, as quick as they can. And uh, they want to move on to the next person. So another Advantage plan. Why? Because they pay better. And again, there's a place for Advantage plans. But you know, it's not about the commission for you. It's about your coverage. You've got to live with that decision and the implications of that decision. And so that's why an agent that only wants to talk about Advantage plans, I, I, would, I, I wouldn't have anything to do with them. Uh, because they're not giving you all your options. They're not trying to educate you and inform you so that you can make a good decision. So watch for agents, rookies, and those that only want to push one kind of plan. Secondly, you want to be careful of the advice that you get. Uh, I know how it is. Once you go on Medicare, and by the way, I'm almost 62, so i got three years. I'm not on Medicare yet, but I know how it goes. As you uh, approach Medicare eligibility, you begin to talk to all your friends and neighbors and coworkers, what they have, what do they do, and all that. Well, remember something. Uh, what, what they decided may be the best for them, but it may not be the best for you. And did they have all the options available to them? I don't know who they dealt with. So just be careful of who you get advice from. And again, I'm sure your family and friends and neighbors mean well, but do they really understand everything, the ins and outs and all the uh, peculiarities of the plans and particulars of the plan? Probably not. Uh, they made a decision they thought was best for them. And uh, of course, they're going to promote that because they made that decision. If they didn't like it, they wouldn't have done it. And so the point is, be careful. And also, and this may shock you, but I promise you this is true, okay? Uh, there are people in local Social Security offices that uh, will give uh, bad advice. They don't mean to do that, but they're not trained very well. Okay, I've had plenty of people in Social Security offices that uh, have, have told my clients things and they, and they got back with me and told me it was said. It was totally wrong. In fact, this is very interesting. We just had this happen in the last couple days. We had somebody that uh, uh, wrote into us and uh, they actually worked for Medicare and said, Marvin, um, I have learned more through your videos on YouTube than I've learned in my, my Medicare training. He works for Medicare. And by the way, I am thrilled that we got to teach him and that he learned. Why? Because he's, he's learning the truth about things. But I thought that's interesting. I've had insurance companies come to some of my local workshops when I used to do those, uh, COVID change, all that. Uh, and they would send their, their uh, these insurance companies would send their agents to my workshops uh, to, to help them to learn about Medicare. Okay, and what I'm saying to you, there's a lot of people out there that are still in that learning stage, and you're going to find that even in Social Security offices. Uh, and by the way, the ones who answer the phones usually are, are not the, the real um, experienced ones, okay? And they, they mean well, but sometimes they give out bad information. So be careful about that. It just happens. And so my whole point is watch who you get advice from, okay? And because you act upon advice that is bad, it could cost you dearly, regularly. Uh, I have people who, who reach out to us who have made mistakes, and almost always it's because they got bad advice from Social Security or bad advice from HR department, <laughs> and so you don't want to do that. So be careful about advice. Okay, number one, agents, number two, advice, and then number three, advertisements. Watch the ads, because I'm telling you, that little blurb that lasts for about a minute or maybe a minute and a half or whatever, all they're doing is hitting the highlights of all the things that look great about the plan, but they never really tell you about the, the details of the plan and how that's going to work. They just simply tell you what you want to hear, uh, so you'll call them up and uh, make an appointment and you know get, get a managed plan. It's basically the way it works. So watch uh, all the ads. All right, so that's number one. Number two, if you decide to reach out to us, I, I want to make sure that you understand what happens. Number one, unless you call us, we will not call you. 
Okay, so if someone reaches out to you and says they're with MedicareSchool.com and you did not call us, it is not us. Okay, it's not. Uh, the only people we call are those who call us, and I'm going to tell you why. It is actually illegal for people to call you unless you ask for a call. Okay, so if someone initiates a phone call, I'm just telling you, we never you have to reach out to us and set up an appointment or um, our um, a person who oversees uh, uh, this particular uh, Facebook live group, her name is Tara Yancic. You have to reach out to Tara and say, Tara, give me a call. You give her her number, I mean, you call her and she'll call you back and all that's going to happen. But I'm telling you, we are not going to call you unless you told us that you want to talk to us. We don't bug anyone. We don't have to bug anyone. We're ready to do business with people that want to do business with us. It'd be our privilege to help you. But make sure you know that we're not going to call you unless you reach out to us. So yeah, keep that in mind. Okay, and then thirdly, and we'll talk about home appointments. Now listen, when I started in this business 15 years ago, I went house to house. I did. That's just the way it worked in those days. Folks, things have drastically changed. So if someone says to you, I'm going to come to your home, I, I, I would tell you I would be very reluctant. Number one, they may not show up. Certainly don't give them any personal information before they show up to your home if you decide to do that. Now as a firm, we do not do that uh, at all. Okay, we write lots of policies, a lot of policies, all over the country, every day. Okay, but we're doing that business by phone. We love to do a screen share. You don't, we don't have to see you, but we like you to see us if, if you te the technology is possible for you to do that. Uh, but we're going to share with you. We're, we're, not, we're, we're, we're going to show you who we are, and we're going to talk to you. We're, we're going to show you uh, the rates, and we're going to show you your plan options. We're going to take uh, plenty of time to make sure that you understand what's going on. But I'm telling you, these people today that are demanding to go to your home, number one, they may not show up. But listen, if they're working out of the trunk of their car, I would be very skeptical. Uh, and again, I'm not saying they're frauds. I'm not saying they're not good people. I'm just saying to you, they're probably uh, not real successful. I'm telling you, I would never go to anyone's home today. Just not, we don't need to do business that way. With technology, and you don't have to be a, a tech expert to do this, but we can do this right over the telephone. It'll be a wonderful experience. And again, if uh, you can, you can download an app and we actually, you can see us, you can see our screen, you know everything that's going on, okay? And then last, let me just brag a little bit about, about our guides. Number one, I am very proud of them. We get reviews all day long, all day long. Sorry. And people talk about <clears throat> Our, our guides, our agents, who guide you through their process. No pressure. They will be patient with you. They will answer your questions. They will show you all your options. And they're going to tell you both sides of the story. They'll talk about supplemental plans, drug plans, and they'll talk about advantage plans, okay? One size does not fit all folks, okay? It's different. And so we just want to make sure you get the plan that's best for you with no pressure, patient, <laughs> thorough, uh, knowledgeable, and it's awesome. Okay, I'm just telling you, that's why I get a little emotional because I trained them. <laughs> and I'm in the office every single day working with our agents and, and making sure that we're delivering to you as good a service as possible. Okay, so enough of that. So whole point is, um, we'd love to do business with you if you'd like, but be sure, <laughs> uh, you know, you gotta call us. That's the way it works. Okay, enough of that. Let's get into uh, tonight's topic. Uh, we're going to talk about a side of Advantage plans uh, that the insurance industry won't show you. And I'm doing this because of all the ads and all the pushy agents. You know, it's interesting. There's agents who get in this business for seven weeks a year. Seven weeks a year. And that's it. They're gone. Okay, they come in during annual enrollment period and try to wrap up, you know, right as much business they can, they're gone. Okay, uh, I hate that. <laughs> I mean, we're in business 52 weeks a year serving people every single day. Okay, and so uh, I'm going to tell you about this because many in the insurance industry will not tell you. Now, listen, I am not saying when I get passionate about this that Marvin Music is the only honest guy and our firm is the only honest firm in America. That's not true. Okay, There's, that's just not true. There's some fine, fine people in this business who want to do what's right. Okay, I know that. And I, I, I want them to be successful. I really do. Um, what I don't like are the, are the crooks and the frauds and the people who are in the business seven weeks a year that really don't care about people. That's what bothers me. So, 
let's talk about three things. Number one, uh, when it comes to Advantage plans, pay attention if you get one to the issue of networks, okay? Networks. Now, networks are not evil, okay? They're not. But networks have limitations and they have restrictions. And that means if you enroll into an Advantage plan, you have to be in a network, either an HMO network or a PPO network. What are the issues? Well, here's what happens. The insurance industry makes the HMO Advantage plans look pretty attractive financially because that's where they have more control. They control it. And so how do they do that? Well, they put together a network, HMO doctors. Sometimes you have to have a referral to see a specialist within your network. Again, not always, but it's pretty common today with HMOs. They want to make sure that you really do need to see a specialist. They want to make sure that if you think you need to see a cardiologist, they want your primary care doctor to agree to that and then make that referral. Okay. Now, by the way, some people are fine with referrals. Other people don't like that, <laughs> but I'm just saying to you, that's a very common feature today within an HMO plan. Now you're going to see that your co-pays are lower on HMOs. You're going to see that uh, your max out of pocket is lower on HMOs. Why is that? Because the insurance industry is trying to direct you to that HMO plan. Why? Because they have more control, probably make more money on those plans. Uh, at the end of the day, I assume that's what's going on. Now, if you have an advantage plan, that's not an HMO, your other option is a PPO. PPOs, uh, again, they're fine. Uh, you're going to have certainly more options. And one of the differences on, on the PPO, if you have to go out of your network, you can do so. But what they don't tell you when you go out of your network, it's going to cost you substantially more. So if you're on a PPO plan and you uh, stay in network, your max out of pocket for the year may be, you know, $3,500 to $5,000. If you go out of network, uh, you can do that, but now it could be seven or $10,000 max out of your pocket. And so that's one of the features that PPO talks about. Hey, you can, you can go to your network, but the issue is gonna cost you substantially more money to do that. And again, the in insurance industry uh, really does not disclose that. And so the whole point is when you take an Advantage plan, you're gonna have to be in a network. If you take a supplemental plan, you don't deal with networks. You can go to any provider, any hospital, any doctor, any specialist, any outpatient surgery, any place you want to go as long as they take Medicare. So Medicare is your network when you have a supplemental plan. And if Medicare uh, uh, covers something, they pay for it, uh, you can uh, uh, know that your supplemental plan is going to follow and fill in the gaps based upon the Medigap policy that you bought. But my point is you don't have networks when it comes to um, uh, supplemental plans. You always have them. Uh, with Advantage plans. So therefore, when I enter into that Advantage plan, I'm going to have some restrictions. I will tell you right now, in some markets today, it can be very difficult, especially on HMOs, to find uh, a skilled nursing facility. I'm not saying they're not in there and you're not going to get in, in, in one, but you may not be able to get into the one you want to get into. Why? Because you have to go to a network provider. All right, and so there are some uh, skilled nursing facilities that we're not going to take advantage plans. Uh, they don't pay us enough money. Uh, I, in fact, this has happened. I, I have met a, a president actually of one of the largest um, uh, uh, skilled nursing facilities in the Midwest, and they don't take any advantage plans. Why? He said they, they, they couldn't make any money. And so you, if you want to go there, you can't be on advantage plan. So the point is, that's what happens. And so that's one of the things insurance industry doesn't want to talk about. How do these networks work? If you're on an HMO, you can't go out of your network. You have to stay in that network unless you're in an emergency situation or an urgent care situation, anywhere in the world, frankly. Uh, but beyond that, if you're on an HMO, you've got to stay in your network. So if you want to go see an oncologist or a specialist or whoever outside the network, you're on your own. That, 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 that plan's not going to pay for that. And they don't talk about this. So that's one issue. Networks are issues. Okay. Uh, the second issue is going to be with um, uh, pre-authorizations. I think this is real important. Pre-authorizations uh, would be any kind uh, of a healthcare service that is um, uh, uh, it's necessary for before you get that healthcare service uh, that the insurance company agrees with the doctor's recommendation and will approve that healthcare service. All right, that's a pre-authorization or pre-approval. They say now, statistically, that about 70 to 72% of all the services that people need today on their Advantage plan will have to be pre-approved by the Advantage company. Okay, not everything, 
but a lot of things, okay? Now, uh, you can see your primary care doctor without a pre-authorization. You can go to your specialist without pre-authorization, get lab work without pre-authorization, uh, your preventive care, certainly all that's without a pre-authorization, okay? Call up, make an appointment, you're good to go. But I can assure you, if your doctor says you need an MRI or you need a CAT scan or you need a PET scan, or that doctor says you need a knee replacement or a hip replacement, or there's some kind of other surgery that you're going to need, or even, uh, uh, doc wants to admit you to the hospital. Uh, and obviously, I'm not talking about an emergency, but uh, you need to go to the hospital uh, or a skilled nursing facility. All that has to be pre-approved. So what does that mean? It means that the doctor um, uh, uh, does not have the final say-so on the Advantage plan. The Advantage company does. Uh, and, and so that just means doctor orders uh, the MRI, the CAT scan, the PET scan, the skilled nursing stay, the in inpatient uh, uh, surgery, uh, those kinds of things. But the insurance company has to be consulted first. And if they agree with the doctor, uh, then and they approve the service, then you'll get it. But I can tell you, they don't always agree with the doctor. Uh, I had it happen not long ago. A lady wanted a knee replacement. And advancement said, no, you don't need that. Uh, the first thing they're going to do is try to treat that with cortisone shots or steroids or something, maybe medications, and then they're going to go nine months of therapy, and then they want to approve that knee replacement. Same thing happens with hips. Uh, some of you uh, who've watched this heard this story before, but it's absolutely true. I uh, had a lady that needed a full hip replacement. Advantage company said, no, you don't need a full hip. You just simply need a rod, and that's all we're going to pay for. And that's all she got. Okay, so that's pre-authorization. And you and, not, you and I hear agents talk about that or, or, or ads talk about that, but that's the reality. And that's what you got to realize, folks. Uh, when you're getting insurance, you're gonna, you have to realize, how's it going to work if you ever need it? And you never know how good your insurance is until you need it. Now, what I find interesting about this whole business, and by the way, I have tons and tons of clients that are doctors, nurses, that are retired, and I will tell you this. Uh, I have never had one single person in the, in the medical field ever get an Advantage plan, ever. <laughs> No doctors, no nurses, coders, no one gets them. Why is that? Well, because they see how they work. Because those are, they're in a situation where people need their insurance and they see this whole pre-approval issue and things that uh, people need and, and the company may not approve. Uh, they, and, and so they're in the industry and they see how insurance works and that's why none of them get advantage plans. Now I'm not saying never, but I've never had it happen in, in my career ever, okay? Uh, just because they see how they work. I kind of uh, kind of compare it to like a mechanic. A mechanic's been a mechanic for lots of years. Uh, they'll sell you, hey, avoid that car. Stay away from that car. Why? Because they know when the transmission is probably going to go out. Maybe the timing belt's going to go out or maybe some of the issues that car has. Why? Because that, a mechanic is under that hood every single day. And they see how those engines work and, and the, the, how those cars work. And they know what's going to break down. And people in the medical field see how these Advantage plans work. And again, I'm not saying they're bad, but you need to know how they work. Don't buy them just because they throw in a little dental plan or you can go to your gym membership for free or because there's no premium. Okay, they're not free. No, you just simply pay as you go. And so you've got to be aware of that. All right. And so the insurance industry doesn't talk about pre-authorizations. And I'm saying you need to know that because it's going to matter. Um, if you need uh, one of those services. All right, so uh, we've talked about pre-authorizations. Um, we've also talked about uh, networks. And then lastly, I'll, I'll stop with this. Uh, and this is a, a concept called a trial right, trial right. And you'll hear talk about this. I, I will tell you this, that uh, it, it's very confusing. So I want to make sure you understand that it does vary. So here's the way insurance business works. The federal uh, government sets up the rules for all 50 states, okay? So we have federal guidelines in Medicare. About 42 of those 50 states follow the federal guidelines, okay? So there are, uh, there are some states, though, that, that also add to those federal rules. They can never allow something in the state to be less of a plan or less of a coverage than the federal guideline they can actually add some things to it. So what happens is they uh, may make uh, uh, people in that state, uh, for instance, Connecticut, v uh, Vermont, um, uh, New York, uh, probably some of the most uh, consumer-friendly states, uh, they will actually have a little additional rules for the consumer, make it a little bit more favorable. But again, 42 of 50 states uh, follow the federal guideline, others a little bit, little, uh, very little bit. Uh, California, uh, 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 Oregon, Washington, Nevada, Illinois, uh, Idaho, uh, Missouri, there's a few a little exceptions with uh, some of their rules. So those are the eight states that make some kind of variables. But here's my whole point. When you hear talk about a trial right, 
Uh, what that means is this is a period of time in which if you're on an Advantage plan, uh, you can uh, get off that Advantage plan and return uh, to original Medicare uh, uh, with no underwriting. Okay, now here's the issue though. Uh, uh, it just depends on the trial right. Is it tied to the Medicare A date or the B date? Usually it's to the A date. Okay, that's most common today. Uh, sometimes it's B, pretty, pretty rare. All right, and all this simply means if you take an Advantage plan, um, and uh, you're on that plan, what happens is, uh, let, let, let me just give a quick example. Let's say that uh, uh, you are uh, turning 65 this month and your birthday is October, uh, let's say today, October 24th, um, uh, uh, 1957. And let's say you're gonna keep working or your spouse is gonna keep working and you decide not to take Medicare. Um, and you don't even enroll uh, in, in Medicare because you, you like your plan, but you've been told that you better take Medicare A. Uh, because if you don't, you're going to be penalized. Okay, by the way, that's not true uh, at all, uh, but uh, uh, there are people who hear that. In fact, you even hear that sometimes from Social Security offices. But trust me, if Medicare A is free, why is it free? If you or your spouse have 10 years worth of work, 40 quarters paid into the Medicare system, that premium for Medicare A is zero for the rest of your life. There will be no penalties, and if you or your spouse are still working, covered by an employer plan that at that company you have 20 or more employees. You do not have to take Medicare A. I promise you, you do not, you do not and you will not be penalized. Uh, you can pick up that A at a later date. Now listen, if you are uh, not covered by a group plan, um, uh, you or your spouse, you're going to enroll into Medicare A and B at 65. But everyone does not have to take Medicare A at 65 if they or their spouse are working and there's 20 or more employees in that company. You don't have to take A and you won't be, you won't be penalized. So that's the way it is, okay? Now, I know a lot of people question that, and I'm happy to do another, another uh, um, uh, video about that. But I'm telling you, you don't have to take A. And here's my point. If A is free, why is it free? 40 quarters, you or your spouses. Uh, it'll always be free. Why? because people who are penalized for A are those that don't have 40 quarters. Okay, they pay a penalty if they don't start at 65. So they also pay a premium for A. So if A is zero, uh, there's no penalty. Okay, and here's the way it works. For every year that we go without A, when we should have had it, if we have to buy it, which means we don't have 40 quarters, we pay a 10% penalty uh, double the years we went without. So let's say that someone doesn't have A, for two years and they have to buy it. Remember, if it's free, it's always free. But if they have to buy it and they should have been, uh, t taken it at 65 and they don't take it till 67, they waited two years. They will pay a 20% penalty added to uh, their A premium, right? A premium, uh, and they'll pay that for four years. So it's 10% for a year, double the years you went without, okay? But that penalty only applies to people who have to buy A. And that means they either have 30 to 39 quarters. Uh, this year, uh, the rate on that is, I think it's uh, $274 a month. They have to buy A, right? They have 30 to 39 quarters. People that have uh, 29 quarters or less, uh, this year I think it's, uh, I think it's $499. It went up a little bit for 2023, but they buy it. So the people that have to buy A, they attach the penalty to that. That 10% or that 20% is attached to the premium they have to pay. Okay, now, so if your years is zero, here's my question. What's a thousand percent of zero? Zero. <laughs> so if it's zero for your part A because you or your spouse have 40 quarters, there's never a penalty for part A. Now, again, if you're not working or you're in a group of 19 or less, take A, take B. But if you're still working, group is 20 or more, you do not have to take Medicare A. And here's my whole point, and I'll tie it into trial right. So let's suppose that you do take part A only because you don't believe Marvin and your birthday is this month. And you enroll and you have an A date of 10-1 of 2022. And you work for three more years. And you retire in uh, uh, 2025, let's say the same month, October 2025, and you enroll in part B. You don't have any trial right at all. So day one on your Advantage plan, day one, the only way you can get off of it is to go to a supplemental plan. You have to medically qualify for that, okay? And so there's states that, that, that tie trial right to the A date, some to the B date, and so it varies. And so my point to you is this, if you want a supplemental plan, get it. 
don't try this business of thinking I'm going to get a, at the ace plane for a certain period of time and then I'll exercise my trial right and I'll move back over. Well, good luck on that because there's so many different rules and there's a lot of problems. Okay, so again, a trial right, I, I, I just, it's, it's out there and uh, rarely do we even use it today because it really, really can uh, come back to bite you. Okay, but I want to make sure you know. Now, let's talk about this last, uh, this last issue. If you take an advantage plan, and let's say you did have a trial right, so you've been on that plan uh, less than a year, <laughs> and you want to go to advantage uh, back to a supplemental plan, you can do so as long as you really do have a trial right, uh, no underwriting required. But after that, if you stay on that advantage plan a year, two, three, four, five years, like most people do, and they want to get off of that, now they're going to go to a supplemental plan, and now they have to medically qualify. Okay, so that just simply means you better be in good health. And this is one of the things the insurance industry does not talk about. Why? Because they want you to be on that advantage plan for the rest of your life. The agent certainly wants you to be on it for the rest of your life because they get a lifetime commission. And so what happens when people stay on those advantage plans, two, three, four, five years, and now they want to move into a supplemental plan other than, other than New York, uh, Connecticut and, and Vermont, okay, all the rest of you and all the other 47 states, if you've been on an advantage plan for any length of time and now you want to get a supplemental plan, now you have to medically qualify, okay? We're going to ask you 25 or 30 health questions. We're going to check all your medications, maybe get a statement from your doctor. And as long as you're medically qualified, then you can get that supplemental plan. But if you're not, I mean, that insurance company looks at your pre-existing conditions and they don't like something, they are not going to approve your policy and you will stay on that advantage plan for the rest of your life, okay? And so a lot of people think, oh, I'll just stay on and I'll just switch and as though I can do that because I want to. No, you can't. No, you can't. There's rules for switching those plans. Insurance companies don't tell you about that. And I can tell you this, folks. There are people that have rheumatoid arthritis. It is very hard to get you approved today for a Medicare a supplemental plan. Some companies will not take um, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, some of you ladies may have osteoporosis. Uh, most companies won't take it. Some will take it as long as there have been no fractures. Uh, if you have one AFib incident in your medical records, you will never get on a supplemental plan, ever. Okay? Unless, you, unless you get one initially, of course. But if you stay on that Advantage plan and now you want to switch, you have AFib, you will not get approved. Uh, they're going to look at your health history, some of them back to, back to five years. They do not have to take your pre-existing conditions. So here's my point to you. Those of you that have some health problems, uh, you are best to go on that, uh, in my opinion now, okay, in my opinion, you're best to go on that supplemental plan because during those first six months of starting Medicare, they have to take you. There's no underwriting. They have to take your pre-existing conditions. Uh, that's just the rules, all right, in, in 47 of the 50 states. Again, Connecticut, uh, uh, New York, and Vermont, I think, are the three uh, where you can, uh, there's no underwriting ever in those states. Uh, but the whole point is this, uh, most of you uh, are going to have to uh, realize there's rules for switching those plans. And again, what's my topic tonight, things the insurance industry does not want to talk about, but you need to know this, and you don't want to find out about it too late. Hey, but back years ago when I did live workshops, I was speaking in St. Louis, and I uh, had a guy come up uh, after one of my workshops, and he actually came to be with his wife. She was going on Medicare, came to the workshop, and he comes up afterwards, and he said, wow, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't uh, know this rule that you just talked about uh, with Advantage plans. And I said, well, are you on one? He said, oh, yeah, I'm on one. And uh, I said, how long have you been on it? He said, 18 months. And, and I said, well, what's the worst thing going on in your health record? And he had psoriatic arthritis. And with psoriatic arthritis, he will never, ever, ever get off his, his advantage plan. It's not going to happen, okay? He's going to have to be on the advantage plan forever. And what was sad about it is he had no idea that that's the way it worked. Why? Because the, the agent wasn't honest or the agent was a rookie and didn't understand those things. And, folks, that's what I'm saying. You have to decide who you do business with. If you reach out to us or some reputable broker, reputable firm, uh, then they'll tell you about both your options. They'll tell you about the ins and outs, all the details to make sure that when you make that decision to go on Medicare, you will have confidence knowing it's the very best decision. Listen, folks, I can pillow my head at night, and my agent, our agents can as well because we know that we just simply gave you the right amount of information so you can make a proper insurance decision because you have to live with that, okay? And we want to make sure you're happy with that decision. All right, a couple ways you can reach out. Please, please, if you want to call Tara, uh, she'll set up an appointment with one of the guides. Uh, but again, we're not going to call you unless you reach out to us. So if someone claims they're with us, I guarantee you, unless you reach out to us, uh, it is not us, okay? Uh, we just don't do business that way. 
You can go to medicareschool.com and uh, watch my videos. Uh, the lots of lots of information there, but get education, folks. Understand what you're doing, okay? Just those essentials to make sure that you're very confident when you go on Medicare. So reach out to us. Hey, also, uh, tell your friends about uh, medicareschool.com. We, we'd be thrilled uh, to be able to teach people to make sure everyone is truly informed uh, about their Medicare options, okay? And if you want to put a comment there below, we'd love that as well. Ask questions. We'll do our very best uh, to get back with you. So thanks so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you next Monday, 5 o'clock. Central Time. Take care.